welcome everybody to the webinar this afternoon. Uh, as you know, we've been doing a block of the month, and this is block five in that series. We have a total of six. This is our shadow work block. It was created for you by Rita Gazard and presented by myself, Mark Garretts, and I'm a National Floriani educator. So as I always like to do before we get into the nuts and bolts of how to do the software and the construction parts of this, I like to show you what the final block is going to look like. So you can see here this is our shadow work block. What's not so obvious from the picture if you're not familiar with shadow work is that what you're seeing is you're seeing the base fabric for the top of the quilt block and that's kind of a, a blue and then you're seeing a green colored fabric and a, a pinkish red color fabric for the flower and the leaves and you're seeing everything through a very very thin layer of batiste so that the underlying fabric is making a shadow effect through the batiste and that's why we call it shadow work and so if you just keep that in mind as we're going forward and you keep a picture in your head of what this block looks like it'll make a lot more sense as we get into the various parts of the thing oops you can see my screen is already up here I forgot to close out this window I'm sorry um, and of course my mouse is not working in my it's not working in I'm gonna close the application and I am gonna start it up again uh, something's going on with my computer I apologize but sometimes after doing that slideshow my mouse is not working in MDQ so I'm gonna start up MDQ again while we're waiting for it to load we're going to do two parts to this. One is going to be the software part that we're going to do in My Decorative Quilter 2. And then the second part is going to be the construction. So again, I apologize for the delay. Um, I'm sure that DJ will edit this out when we get to the actual um, uh, recording of this. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and click Create a New Design if you haven't done that. So you um, don't have this plank window here you want to go ahead and do that you can either do it the way I just did it or you can click right here and create the new page icon the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our work area to make sure that we are all on the same page both literally and figuratively and the way we're going to do that is we're going to come up to our ruler bar right here and I want you to look over here in the upper right hand corner and check to see if you're in millimeters mode in any case uh, if you're not, or even if you are, right-click on the ruler, and you can click right here, and you can switch into metric, which I've already done. You also want to make sure that Show Grid is unchecked, and that Snap to Grid is unchecked. Okay, and the rest of the grid settings don't matter for this particular project. But should you see the grid by checking it, it will go away or come back. You can also do that with this grid icon over here. Clicking this will toggle the grid on and off. So you can see if I click it, there's my grid. If I unclick it, my grid goes away. So for this project, we're just going to go ahead and leave the grid off. Now we have shown you multiple ways to create the actual outline of the quilt block or the lines we need to show us where our quilt block is going to go. We've shown you how to load in a predefined quilt block from the built-in quilt blocks. We've also shown you how to manually draw a quilt block in various ways. We're going to use yet another method for this particular block and that's using this icon right here our custom shapes icon now these are artwork shapes that are predefined in the software for you so I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and when you do that you're gonna open up this window showing the shapes that we give you built into the program and there's one right here called box and we're gonna go ahead and click that and it happens to be a square box so we're gonna go ahead and use that as the basis for starting our block today it's a square block and it's made out of artwork and as you know artwork does not stitch it's basically lines that we can either color in between or tell the program to fill with stitches or outline with stitches or do some other thing with it but artwork in and of itself doesn't stitch so the first thing we're going to do though is we're going to make sure that this is the right size for our quilt block to do that with it selected and it should be selected when it comes in come over here to your properties box and click on the transform tab and you can see right here it came in at 116 millimeters 
If your properties box shows it in inches, your inches will be checked here. So I'm just going to click it right here so you can see it's 4.57 inches. But if I change it to millimeters, you'll see it changes to millimeters. Also want to make sure that maintain aspect ratio is checked. And we're going to change this to be 150 millimeters because that's the size we want our finished quilt block to be, which is going to fit in that 6-inch block. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to come over and type 150. And you can see because maintain aspect ratio is checked that it uh, also shows here 150. And I'm going to click Apply. And it makes it bigger now so it doesn't fit on the screen. If you remember from our previous webinars, that double clicking on the magnifying glass or the zoom tool is an automatic zoom to fit. So that's a great shortcut. So I'm going to go ahead and double click that. And you can see now that I have a nice view of my block and everything fits on the screen. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a basting stitch that goes around the edge of this block so that it tacks uh, our initial layers of the quilt block down to our stabilizer. And like I say, right now this is artwork over here. And to do that, I'm going to use these icons down the bottom, which we call our one-click wonders. And I've got a run stitch icon here. And I'm going to go ahead and click my run stitch icon. And if I was in FTCU, that would have actually taken this artwork and converted it into a run stitch. And when I say convert, it would have actually changed the artwork into that run stitch, meaning that the artwork would no longer be there. But in MDQ2, we've implemented this a little bit differently. And I think it's a really nice change. Whenever you convert from artwork into stitches, it automatically leaves the artwork behind. And that's great because we're going to use this artwork several times for other, other things. So you'll see how cool that feature is. But here's my stitches right here. So now I've got a run stitch here. And we want this to be a basting stitch. So we're going to come in. We're going to change our stitch length right here in our properties from 3 millimeters, which is the default. We're going to change it to 5. So I'm just going to type a 5 over it. Remember that whatever you change here, nothing happens until you click Apply. So I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. Now we've got a nice basting stitch there. So the next thing we want to do is we want to bring in our flower design into the center of the block here. To do that, we're going to use our built-in embellishments. These are quilting type designs that are built into the program for you to use just for things like this. We're going to open that up by clicking our embellishments icon right here. They're organized into various themes. So you can see here we've got our folder that's got birds in it. We want our flower design. So we're going to drop down. and We're going to come and we're going to choose the flower uh, folder. And then we're going to scroll down a little bit because I need to use flower 07B. So I'm going to use this design right here. If I click that, it's automatically going to bring it and put it into the center of the design. And I'm going to double click the magnifying glass again to make everything big and in the center. And it's centered it up automatically. If for some reason yours didn't show up in the center, come up here with this selected and click right here on the center icon. And that will put it in the center of the screen. The next thing we want to do is we want to size this flower so that it is the size that fits our block better. And before we do that, let's just take a look at what we've got over here in the sequence view. We actually have two different items. We have this item right here, which is actually artwork, and it's in Floriani Antique Bronze. And then in Floriani Brand, we have the actual stitches of the flower. Now this outline you can see over here, it goes around the edge of it, and it's offset a little bit. And that's great for um, filling, say, the outside area with stippling, but not going into the center of the flower. And you'll see how we use that later. But what we're going to do is we're going to resize both of those. So they should come in both selected. We're going to come up to our transform box. And this time, instead of actually typing in a numeric value, we're going to use our percentage transform, which is over here. Again, you want to make sure that maintain aspect ratio is checked. And we're going to size this up to 165%. So I'm just going to uh, cursor over the 100, and I'm going to change it to 165 with my keyboard. And then I'm just going to click Apply. And you can see now I've got a nice big pattern there for us to work with. Now we want to actually work with the stitches and not the whole thing. So I'm just going to click over here in my sequence view on the bottom icon, which again is our stitches. 
So now I just have my stitches selected. And what we want to do is we want to actually make this a little bit bolder than it is. So instead of being a single run, we're going to change it into a bean stitch. So I'm going to click the down arrow here, and I'm going to change to a bean. And that has a default of three repeats, which means that for every stitch, there's actually going to be three stitches. And that's going to make our stitches look a lot bolder. We're going to go ahead and leave it on three, but um, I do want to uh, leave my stitch length also alone on three. So we'll just go ahead and leave that all the same way. And then we're going to go ahead and click Apply. And you can't see anything change over here, but this is going to change it into a bean stitch with three repeats. So the very next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our applique pieces. And we're going to call them appliques. We're going to use them like appliques. But they're going to be a little bit non-traditional. You'll see that in a second. So what we want is we want to, first of all, create an outline that goes around the whole design, so basically where our leaves are. So we're going to create an outline that hugs the edge of the stitches of the leaves. We already have an outline in here, but it's we're going to use that for something else, so we don't want to disturb it. Plus, we want it to actually hug the leaves. So with our total design selected here, with our uh, stitches selected, I'm going to come up to the Create Outlines tool, which is right here, and I'm going to click that. And that's going to create another outline. Now, if your ripples is set to anything but one, you want to set that to one. Your spacing for this wants to be set at zero, so I'm going to set it to zero. You want to make sure that cascade is checked and that join repeats and remove selection are unchecked, and then click OK. And what that's going to do right here, you can see I've created another artwork, and you can't really see it on the screen very well because it's hugging those stitches very, very closely. And uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to create another outline that goes around this circle. Now, we can't use the outline tool to do that right now because everything is one big piece. So we're going to do that using a different technique, and we're just actually going to draw a circle to go in here. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to build, use our built-in circle in our artwork tool here. So right now it's defaulting to rectangle. If you click this little black down arrow, you'll see here that there's an ellipse tool. So you want to go ahead and click on the ellipse. And when you do that, you'll see that your cursor changes to a crosshair with a little ellipse by it to tell it that's what we're going to draw now. So if we were to just click and drag, we'd draw an ellipse. But if we hold down Control and we click and drag, that is going to make a perfect circle. So I'm going to hold down the Control key. You can't see me doing it, but I've just pressed the Control key on my keyboard. Now I'm going to click and drag down to the lower right. And it doesn't matter how far or what size circle. But the important part here is you want to make sure you let off the mouse. So I've just let off the mouse before you let off the control key. And so you want that sequence. You want to hold down control, click and drag, let off the mouse, and then let off the control key, and you'll have a perfect circle. Now we're going to make the, per the circle the perfect size to match this circle here. So we've already pre-measured that for you. So I'm going to come over to my Transform tab here, and I need this to be 64 millimeters. You can see I was pretty close. Again, you want to make sure you're in millimeters, that maintain aspect ratio is checked. And we're going to change the top one to 64. You can see it automatically changes the bottom one. And click Apply. Now what we need to do is move it so it's centered over these stitches. So you're going to move your cursor into the center of the design so it changes to that hand. And then click and drag the circle. Now if you've got good eyes and you can get it nice and lined up, you can just let off like that. And it'll put it right in the center. And you know what? That's close enough. But if your eyes are not that good or your mouse is not that good and you can't get it, I'm going to show you another technique. Let's say you were off here a little bit to the right. And you can see I'm off a little bit to the right. One of the cool things you can do is you can hold down the control key and you can use the arrow keys on your numeric pad or your separate arrow keys to actually move this nudge it a little bit left, right, up, or down. So I'm going to hold down Control, and I'm going to nudge it to the left. So I'm pressing arrow, 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 and that's a little bit too far. So I'm going to nudge it back to the right a little bit, and there we go. We're perfectly lined up, and so that's just showing you another technique. So what we're going to do now is we are going to take the uh, 
outline and uh, we are going to create an applique with it. So we're going to create appliques out of this artwork and this artwork. So we're going to do them both at the same time to save some steps. So I could control click this other one to select both of them, but another shortcut I want to teach you is you can just simply click on the top item in the sequence view here, the parent item of both of these, and it automatically selects both of them underneath. So now whatever I do will affect both of them the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn these into appliques. And so I'm going to do that again down here with my one-click wonders, but this time I'm going to click my applique button. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, and that's going to put some appliques in here. Now that's a traditional applique that has a placement line, a tack down line, and a finishing stitch. But for this application, all we really want to do is use the placement and the tack down. So we're not going to want to sew our finishing stitch. So over here in the properties box, you can see right here I've got three options. I can check to sew the placement, the tack down, and the finishing. I'm going to uncheck finish, so I don't want to sew that for both of these. And I'm going to go ahead and click apply, and that's going to take our finishing stitch away. So now I've just left with the placement and the tack down, which is really what we want for this shadow work design. So now what we want to do is we want to create another basting stitch because at this point in the design, we're going to, after we've tacked our fabric down, we're going to lay our batiste over the top. So we want another basting stitch going all the way around the edge to tack down our batiste fabric once we put that down. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to our sequence view, scroll back up to the top, and here's a great part. Remember it left this artwork at the top behind when we turned it into the first set of basting stitches right here. We're going to make another set, so we're just going to click on that one, and we are going to come down to our run stitch conversion icon, click that, and it's going to create yet another set of stitches and put it at the end, which in this case is right where we want it. Again, we want this to be a basting stitch, so we're going to come up here to our stitch length, change it to 5 millimeters, and click Apply. And there is the basting stitch for our Batiste fabric. The next thing we want to do is we want to create our shadow effect. And this is the stitching that's going to go on top of the Batiste to show us the uh, nice crisp outlines of where our flower and our leaves are going to be. So to do that, we're going to come over to our sequence view here. And we're going to select the first uh, artwork here, which is our, actually, we're not. We're going to come up here to our uh, Floriani brand, which is outlining the whole thing. And we are first going to move this to the end, because we really want this to stitch out after the stitches that we just put in. So the way we're going to do that, we could drag and drop it down to the bottom. But instead, I'm going to show you another technique, which is to right click on it. And you'll get another menu. And down here is a Move menu. So if you hover or click on that, you'll get another menu. And over here, you can scroll over, or you can move the mouse over, and select Last. And that's going to move that item down here to the last. So now that's going to stitch out in the next sequence. So here's where we're going to put our Batiste down. Here now we're going to outline it. But this is all going to stitch out in one color, which is really don't, not what we want. We really want to make these leaves be one color and the center part of our flower be another color. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to split this run stitch design into two pieces. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to come all the way over here to the left to our shape tool and click it with that last item selected. And you can see when I do that, I get these little blue squares, which are called nodes or points. And this is showing me the lines underneath the stitches showing the program where to put those stitches down. You can also see over here I've got a red dot and below it a green dot. And that's, if you remember from our previous lessons, this is where our stitches start and stop. But what we're going to do for this exercise is we're going to take our cursor and come somewhere up in here just to the right of the uh, red dot. And we're going to right click on the line. And you're going to get another menu that comes up. And we're going to come down here to this one called Split Line. So I'm just going to click that. And that's actually going to split this stitches into two. So you can see here I've got a run stitch that's the outline of our leaves and another run stitch now that is the outline of our 
flower section. So I'm going to leave this one selected. If it's not, go ahead and click on it. And we're going to change this to a green thread so that not only does the machine stop, but also prompts us for the proper color thread. So to do that, I'm going to find a green down here in my color palette. I can see one right here, but if you don't see one, go ahead and scroll either to the uh, right or to the left with these icons here. So I'm just going to go ahead and select a green. And when I click that green, it's going to change the color of that thread to green. And it's automatically going to add it to my color palette. And now what I've done is I've got this in green. And the second one, is we're going to go ahead and leave in brand. And if that color works for you, great. If not, you can change it here. Or you can simply control it when you change the thread in your machine. So what we're going to do next is we are going to create our quilting stitches. So to do that, we're going to scroll all the way back up to the top of our sequence view. We are once again going to select this initial artwork, which you can see again how handy it is that it left that behind. And we're going to come down and we're going to select the next piece of artwork, which is that original outline that we talked about, this one over here that goes around the edge of the flower design. So before I select it, though, the second one, look up here at my combine icon. You can see that it is not lit up because I can't combine just one thing. But the minute I select another piece of artwork, so I'm holding down my control key and selecting that second artwork piece. So I've got the outline and the big outline selected. You can see my combine icon lit up. So now I can click it. Now look over here in my sequence view. You can see I've created a single piece of artwork that has the outline of my block with a cutout in the center that represents the shape of the flower. And that's exactly what we want, because we are now going to fill this with our stippling stitches. So that's going to go around the outside. But you can see when I do that, it's not going to encroach on the flower design, which is exactly what we want to do. So again, we're going to use our one-click wonder down here. Click on Auto Stippling. So we're going to click that. And it is going to fill this outside area with stippling stitches. Now we're going to make a few adjustments to these stippling stitches. So I'm going to come over here to my uh, properties box. We actually want to make the density a little bit bigger, which is going to increase the size of the stitches. And so we're going to change that to 3.5. We're actually going to make the stitch length a little bit smaller. So we're going to change it from 3.5 to 3. And that's actually going to make the corners turn a little bit better. And then I'm going to go ahead and click Apply. You can see now I've got a slightly bigger stippling pattern in here. And the very next thing that we need to do is we need to create an outline that sort of goes on the inside here. So this is kind of going to make a nice little defined edge to kind of finish off our stippling. And to do that, we're going to come down and we are going to click on the artwork. Oh, excuse me, before we do that, we have to create some artwork. I'm sorry. And what we're going to do is we are going to select the very first green run stitch, which is right here. And so that's our outline of the flower. And what we're going to do is we are going to create another outline. So we're going to come up to our Create Outlines tool and click that. And this time, we want our ripples to remain at 1, but we want a little bit of space. We want a little bit of offset from our flower. So we are going to change our spacing to 1 millimeter. And then we're going to go ahead and click OK. And down at the bottom, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom of our sequence view, you can see it will have created a new outline that goes around the edge of our flower. The original run stitch is still selected. We don't want to modify that. So you want to make sure you come down here and simply click on the very, very last artwork. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change that to a run stitch. And we are going to come down here and simply click on Run. And that is going to create our run stitch for us. We're going to leave all the properties of that particular run stitch OK. And now all we need to do is save this design. And before we do that, though, we do need to double check that our design size hasn't changed. Because one of the things that can happen is to make these corners turn and look real good. Sometimes, like you can see up here, it'll sneak out just a little bit beyond the end of our block. 
So we're going to select the whole block, and I'm going to do that by dragging a box around the entire block. You could also do that by clicking the top item up here called All Items in the Sequence View, or by doing it from the Edit menu and doing a Select All. So I can go ahead and do that, and you see it does the exact same thing. And we're going to come over here. We're going to scroll all the way over in our Properties box to our Transform tab, and you can see our design got just a tiny bit bigger. Now, if you're using a really big hoop, this wouldn't matter, but if you're using a 150 millimeter hoop, this is going to give you an error and it won't stitch. So we're going to change it back to 150. Also make sure that maintain aspect ratio is checked. We're going to do the top one. We're going to change that to 150. And you can see this was actually 149.8. That's close enough. We're going to go ahead and click Apply. And that's going to shrink it down just a little bit. So now it'll fit in the hoop just fine. All we need to do now is save the design. So I'm going to come up here to my Save icon, click that, and you can see here it's going to try to put it, in my case, in my August 2015 Projects folder. You can see we've already given you a completed block, so you can see what it looks like uh, in case you get lost in the software instructions, or if you want to just use this block, you can. Uh, but since this one's already here, I could save over the top. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to uh, give it a new name. I'm going to call this My Shadow Work Block and go ahead and click Save. And this is going to save in the WAF format, which you want to do, just in case you want to come back and edit this block again. But of course, WAF can't be stitched, so you're going to have to save it again in your machine format. To do that, come back to File and click Save As. And now you can pick your machine format from the drop down. So let's say, for example, I want to save it for Genomi and go ahead and click uh, the JEF format and click Save, and that'll go ahead and put that Genomi file in. All you need to do then is put it on a stick or whatever other method you use to get it over to the machine. So that completes the software section of our webinar, and let's go ahead and move on now to the construction section. So I'm going to go ahead and start up that PowerPoint one more time. And I'm just going to go ahead and click through these two screens because you've seen what it, you've seen them before. Let me just give you a quick overview of the project. So as you know, this is the fifth of six blocks, and there's going to be one block every single month. So we have one more to go, and each block is going to be stitched out four more times. And at the end of the six months, the 24 blocks will be joined together to create a 40-inch by 25-inch wall hanging. Now, we're going to give you some materials in the next couple of screens. The list that follows are the specific ones that you're going to need for this particular block. But for the complete list, you want to go back and check the instructions for block number one. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click again. Here's the materials required, not counting the fabric. We'll get to that in a second. You're going to need some Floriani Quilted Soft Bamboo Cotton Blend Batting. You're going to need some Floriani Nylon No-Show Mesh. You're going to need embroidery and bobbin thread, and you want to choose colors that work well with your fabric choices. You're going to need some RNK Perfection Tape. That's your pink tape. Uh, you're going to need Floriani Squeeze and Snip Scissors or something similar. These are very sharp, small scissors that can get into tight spaces for trimming the fabric. And lastly, you're going to need a minimum 6 inch by 6 inch or 150 millimeter by 150 millimeter hoop size. For the fabric details, you're going to need four 7-inch squares of the base fabric for the top. That's our top quilting fabric. You're going to need four 7-inch squares of very light batiste. This is going to create our shadow. You're going to need four 5-inch squares for the leaves. Probably want to choose a green, but that's up to you. And then four 3-inch squares for the flowers. It can be whatever color you want for the flowers. And then you're going to need four 7-inch squares for your backing fabric. And these fabric quantities make all four blocks. So before we start embroidering, just a couple quick notes here. First of all, we put a lot of the color changes in this design, uh, especially in our appliques, etc., so that the machine will stop so you can put down the various pieces of fabric, etc., in the hoop, uh, and then put the hoop back in and start up the machine again. But you can change the thread color at those points if you want, but again, a lot of those thread changes are there just to make the machine stop. Now, if you have a multi-needle machine, it's important to realize that you're going to have to manually put in your reserve stop commands or whatever it's called in your machine 
to make the machine stop between the colors because as you know your multi needle wants to zoom on ahead and pick the next color for you automatically and you wouldn't be able to put the fabric down. So let's go ahead and get started embroidering the design. First thing you want to do is load that shadow work block design into your machine. Hoop up a piece of Floriani nylon no-show mesh all by itself. Get it nice and tight in the hoop. You want to center a 7-inch square piece of batting in the hoop. Place the 7-inch base fabric over the batting and secure both of them to the hoop with embroidery perfection tape, as you can see in the picture here. Next, you want to go ahead and attach the hoop to your machine. Stitch out the first color choice to base the fabric and the batting to the stabilizer. And then you want to stitch out the next color, which will be the placement line for the leaves. And you can do this all in one step if you want, because there's really nothing to do in between. And you can see here in the picture, you've got the outline of the block, which is holding everything together, and then the placement line for the leaves. Next, you want to put your fabric down that's for the leaves. So you want to take that 5-inch square, cover the placement lines with it, and secure the edges with embroidery perfection tape. Just make sure you don't get any of the tape in the area of the stitching. And then you want to stitch out the third color choice to tack the fabric in place. Now, Rita likes to stitch that line again just to make sure it's good and tacked down. If you want to do that, uh, use your machine controls to back up a color and go ahead and stitch that again. Next, you want to trim that fabric as close as you can to the outside of the tack down stitches that you, you can see in the picture here. And then you want to stitch out the next color, which will be the placement lines for the flower, which is that circle in the center. Then you want to take your sharp scissors. And again, if you want, you can cut out the center like we've done here. And this is simply to remove excess bulk in the quilt block. If you don't care, you can go ahead and leave it in. It is going to be a wall hanging, so it's not that big a deal. But uh, if you want to go ahead and trim it out, you can. Next, you want to take your three-inch flower fabric square and cover the inner placement stitches like you see here. If you want, you can tape it down. And then you're going to stitch out the next color. And then, again, you are going to trim as close as possible to those tack down stitches. And you'll be left with uh, a circle of fabric in the center. Next, we're going to take our light batiste fabric and we're going to center it over the design and tape it down with embroidery perfection tape. And you can see here in the picture, you can see how those underlying fabrics shadow through. Next, you're going to stitch out the next color, which is going to base that batiste down to the rest of the block. And now's the time when you might want to change your thread color to green, because the next color is going to outline the leaves. If you don't want to use green, that's up to you. And then go ahead and stitch out that thread and that's going to outline the leaves like you see here. You probably want to change the color of the thread one more time to go with the color of the center of your flower and then go ahead and stitch that out and when you're done you'll see something that looks like this. The next thing you're going to do is remove the hoop from the machine, flip it upside down and put your piece of backing fabric right side up on the underside of the hoop and secure it as tight as possible using embroidery perfection tape. Again, you want to make sure that that tape stays outside of the center of the block and reattach the hoop to your machine. Now we're going to change the thread to a color that you like for the quilting stitches. This is going to show on the top now. It probably wants to be a light color uh, to go with the Batiste, but that's completely up to you. Um, and you want to stitch out the last two colors to quilt the layers together and also to outline the leaves. And that completes the block. The very next thing you need to do is simply finish it up by removing the hoop from the machine and unhoop the block from the hoop. You're going to trim the block a quarter inch all the way around from the basting stitches. And using a transparent quilting ruler and a rotary cutter makes this super easy. Uh, when you're done, each block will be slightly less than six and a half inches. You want to go ahead and repeat that entire procedure three more times to make a total of four blocks. And we want to thank everybody for attending. We hope that you will use the video along with the print PDF instructions to recreate this project at home. And we hope you'll come back next month for the next block in the series, and that'll be our last block. And we also want to remind you 
that we're doing a contest. So don't forget to post your blocks on the Floriani Embroidery Facebook page. It's important that it goes on the Floriani Embroidery pa Facebook page because at the end of this whole project sequence, we're going to be giving out some prizes to the people with the best looking finished quilt. But to qualify to win the grand prize, you have got to be posting your progress of your blocks all along the way. And so again, I want to thank everybody for attending, and I'm going to throw it back to DJ. DJ, you have anything else to add? Well, thank you very much, Mark, and uh, it was a great webinar. Shadow work um, is is a lot of fun, and it's really easy to do. It's just a lot of people haven't tried to create it themselves, and I like this technique of doing shadow work uh, utilizing applique. And um, so great job on the webinar. Um, and Keep those uh, blocks coming and post it on our Facebook page because um, we do love to see them. And I guess what I can do, Mark, is probably show a few of those if you want to. Sure. Um, let me go ahead and be, make myself the presenter so you can see my screen. Can you see it? I don't. Okay, do you see it now? Yep, now I do. Okay, so this is just uh, some samples of some blocks we received. This is block number one, which was the faux piecing technique. And so here's just a couple samples of those. Um, this was, this one was a, a little bit newer one, I believe. I really like the colors of this one as well. They're all so different, but they use the same pattern. That's what I love about um, this competition. So you can see here there's a number of them utilizing block number one, the faux piece. And you can see they all look so different. And this is another one that just came in not too long ago. And then here's the Trapunto blocks that we did, um, block number two. So as you can see, the, the fabric choices and the thread choices can totally make a difference in these um, in these blocks, and so it's really neat to see this. This is block number three, I believe. Yeah, and uh, we have a couple of these, and then we do have one for block number four, which was uh, July. So just an example of that block, and so we do appreciate you sending these in, and we hope that you will continue to do that. And um, you just post them onto our Floriani Embroidery um, Facebook page, and, and we take it from there. So, again, Mark, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next time um, going over, I believe, what one are we going to be on? Are we going to be have a webinar next month, so block number six, on the 15th, I believe, of September. So we will see you next time. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.